Braceport Wheaton got a shout out from uh, from Joe the other day on the broadcast mm -hmm. um, in terms of his special teams potential. What is it that you guys like about him you know, as a as a potential Gunners special teams player? I mean, I mean the obvious with Bryce is just size, speed. You know, uh, you know he's six four, he's two hundred twenty five pounds or two thirty, whatever he is, and he runs four four zero. That's those measurables measurables are pretty special. And, uh, you know, whenever you can get a guy, and, and with him, he's a very mature rookie. You know, he, uh, he goes about his business, you know, very professionally. He comes into meetings, he works his tail off, he's attentive, and he wants to learn. So, you know, when you have those qualities, smart, tough, dependable, uh, and just those physical attributes, you know, he has really, really big upside, I think. What's your role in, like, when they're getting it down to 53, like, are you, like campaigning for guys you know can help you, or how does that work? You know, I, I tell our guys, I said, I, I play favorites. Like, I play favorites all the time. I play, I favor the guys who are making the most plays, you know, so and that's just, you know, that's part of it. I mean, you're always trying to, you know, build it from the top down, the bottom up, especially, and the bottom up guys are the guys that help us the most. Uh, they're going to, you know, you got to maximize the value of your roster. So we're always trying to, uh, find a way to get better, you know, at the bottom end of it. There's always that feeling where, you know, guys say it all the time, well, I know I have to be on special teams in order to be able to make the roster. But it, can you speak to the, the challenge of that it's a skill, that it's not just a guy saying I'm going to run down the field and, you know, just because I'm running down the field and being willing, that makes me able and I'm going to make the team just because of that. Yeah, you're right. There's a certain kind of skill set, you know, that you need. Um, you know, you see a, guy, a lot of guys that are willing to do it, but they just don't know how. Um, but when you find those guys that really understand it, you know, leverage, angles, speed, hat placement, hands, and just have a knack for finding the ball, you know, those are the guys you get excited about. And then those other guys, you just coach them and bring them along, you know, especially because a lot of it is the willingness to do it. You know, it's not, it's not for everybody, and we understand that. With some, um, with with, um, with Eric Gray, I mean, and, and any rookie, they're gonna say, you know, you might be our return guy. I mean, how do you, um, you gotta kind of juggle. Okay, he wants to get the ball and make a big play, but then he makes a couple of decisions in the game the other day, which you know, just maybe save some yards, but they're not any kind of wow things. That you know, what do you prioritize with a guy like him? The latter, what you yeah. just, you know, just making good decisions, and he's done that so far, uh, you know. He's, he's done some some really good things and uh, you know as far as decision making and you know we always tell our guys let the plays come to you don't chase them you know and, and the plays will come to you like you, as, as a rookie they all have all rookies have a tendency to try and go chase plays How but you sorry. just sorry you just gotta you know let the play come to you he's um the uh, that, that play at the goal line on the um, kickoff mm -hmm. would a lot of guys have panicked and said okay I better go get that ball could have absolutely absolutely we've seen it happen before you know but uh again the kid you, i mean you got to think about it i mean eric's played at oklahoma and tennessee like it was twenty five thousand people in the stands the other day like he's used to 106 you know 105 so it doesn't he's been on the big stage before so he, it doesn't phase him how close are you to feeling confident that or that he's ready to be put out there in a big game, you know, regular season that you know, to, be, I, to be a NFL returner. You don't know until until it happens. You know what I mean? Like, it's not about a, a you know, you watch. All you can do is go by his day to day. Every day, all he's done since he's been here is get better every day. Like you watch him, like what, you know, you you know what it's out, what it's like out here. The wind, like, and then in the stadium the other day, you know, their guys were struggling with the wind. And Eric just, you know, he did a great job with it. So, I mean, that part of him making good decisions, he's checked all the boxes so far. So, you know, you just you know, hope he just keeps getting better. Ed mentioned how Joe kind of gave Bryce a shout out. Is there anybody else? Cause, you know, we certainly can't evaluate special teams play the level you can. That stood out to you here uh, this summer? You know, it, it's a lot of guys that, that, are, that are playing well. Uh, I don't want to point out any guys in particular. But as a group, I think they're doing a really good job of being coached by literally just told them, you know, I can't look around the room and not see a guy that doesn't want to be coached and doesn't work hard. 
And all of these guys are trying to put themselves in a position to where they can make a team. And we all know everybody can't make this team, but you know, hopefully they show themselves well enough to where they can make other teams and just make themselves proud and make, make themselves better every week. Because that's what it's all about, Us, our group getting better so we can help our football team. Is it, what is it difficult for a guy who is a veteran guy who's never really played special teams six, seven years long to, to try to learn them at that point? Is it, is it too late? It's not easy. It's never too late for anything, but it's definitely not easy. It's, it's a, you know, when you get to that point, it's, a, it's more of a desire thing. And then just being able to uh, learn that skill set, you know, it's a different kind of skill set. It's very similar, but it is different at the same time. What does just Sean Corbin give you on teams? Jay Sean works hard. He's smart. He's tough. He's dependable. He's physical. Uh, he's a good football player. He just, he, he gives you value. Uh, he's he's just a good football player. T Mac, understanding your focus is on the here and now, obviously. Mm -hmm. But can you look back to maybe the beginning of last year around this time and and kind of just talk about how this roster has changed, you know, seemingly many ways for the better. Yeah, I mean we're we're a lot faster than we were last year, I think. Um, you know, and and just overall, we're just it's more competition at each spot. Uh, you know, and it's, you know, Joe's done, Joe and his staff's done a great job, and, and Dave's done a great job of putting, you know, this roster together. And again, we're just always working, trying to tweak it, get better. That's our jobs, you know, you know, as personnel people, that's their job, always trying to look to get better. And we're trying to, the guys that they bring us, trying to make sure they get better while they're here. So it, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's, it's definitely uh, moving in the right direction for sure. How does, uh, we'll, we'll take two more. Geo's skill set translates special teams, and what does he need to do to become like a, a core guy? Uh, you know, it's like all rookies. It's it's different. Like some they did some in college, especially being a defensive player, did some things in college. But it's just the whole maturation process of being a rookie. You know, learning how to be a pro. You know, finding out what you do really well, and then um, trying to maximize that skill set. You know, and that's that's the thing that. I think Gio and all the rest of the rookies, they just got to find out, okay, what's my bread and butter, right? And, and now I got to hang my hat on that, and then I got to bring everything else up to speed. Do you have any examples? I was asking about a guy who's late bloomer, six, seven years in, somebody who picked it up late in their career during the course of your time doing this? Uh, normally the guys that, that play teams later in their career played it early in their career you know it's it's rare where you see a guy that hasn't played on teams uh then just start doing it years seven eight or whatever it is you don't see it a lot uh, but i mean it definitely happens i mean i i, I haven't seen it a lot but it definitely happens